So, Tom, Katie from the Lottery Net Winners, welcome to the RGM podcast. Thanks for your time, guys. That's all right. Time is but a concept invented by man. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so throughout this podcast and throughout RGM recently, we're trying to celebrate hardworking bands that are doing a lot through the pandemic and breaking barriers, really, and, and doing new things and um, speaking to fans in different ways because we can't do anything at the minute. But the roadmap to gigs is, is upon us. Apparently. Uh, it's looking pass- possible again. Uh, how, how do you feel about the roadmap now? We might as well talk about that. It's, it's topical at the minute. How do you feel about uh, how the roadmap feels and the possibility of gigs happening again? It's certainly um, it's certainly a, a nice breath of fresh air to have any yeah. kind of positivity coming from the government and 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 you know some the defining actual dates, which is great. But having said that, man, like they said they said fifteen days, fourteen days back in uh, March last year. Yeah. So. Um, I, I just, I've, I think I've learned now the amount of times we've cancelled and rescheduled gigs and the, the amount of things that um, have been pulled from underneath us, really, to be quite a pessimistic kind of guy. But, I mean, you yes. know, in a nice way, pessimistic with a smile. Yeah. Just like, I'm sure that one day it will we'll come back and it'll be amazing. And, and, and I just know that that first tour, which is, at the moment is in September and is looking like that could be the, the one. Yeah. I just know that I'm going to be a blubbering yeah. mess. Like we're doing the Ritz in Manchester and I know that <laughs> I, I'm, I'm quite soft anyway. So like I'm quite sensitive. I, I, yeah. So you I know. Anything done, we'll just go. No. Yeah. We'll go and stay. Oh, Manchester. The yeah. mischief. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, are you feeling good? It's one of them, like like you said, it kept everything keeps getting rearranged, and I think if it does happen when it's now meant yeah. to be going ahead, it's just going to be it's going to feel unbelievable. It's going to be so good to be back out there doing yeah doing what we're doing. born yeah. to do. I think like it's been so hard, you know, not being clapped yeah. at all the time. Like <laughs> I I've started to question: Am I a genius? Am I really? Am I a sexy genius <laughs> that everyone wants to be around? Because it's hard when no one's telling did you. Did you start going that. out? Did you start going out on? Did you start going out at th- on Thursdays at eight o'clock and just thinking that claps for me? I, I just yeah, I just took that. Thank <laughs> the you. NHS claps. Thank you. More. <laughs> I'll take it. I'm missing it. <laughs> Brilliant. So um, yeah, one of these themes of the podcast is supporting bands that are working really hard, and and, and I'm passionate about doing that. Um, one thing I wanted to discuss with you as well, and just open up a bit of conversation is, um. The, there's, is the music press and how that's changed through the pandemic too. Uh, I've noticed a lot of blogs diversifying and starting to do PR uh, and diversifying in different ways to try and make money through the pandemic. Yeah. Um, I know you guys have got your own PR people and you've got a professional uh, team behind you, but have, have you noticed a different... <laughs> I wouldn't use the professional. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, Certainly. it feels like they are. <laughs> So it, 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 how does it feel for you guys? How has it been uh, trying to get press out or, or I think you know, you're open sharing your a, stuff? A bit of a can of worms with me here because I don't really believe in, um, in, in the music industry format. Like, I think it's quite prehistoric. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think that the music industry in general has adapted um, to the since like the 90s or the early 2000s when people were still buying records. Like, nothing has... Like everything has changed, and I don't really feel like the music industry has changed with it. So I am, um, and I shouldn't really be saying this to a magazine. I don't really care about press so much. Like yeah. we pay for it, and 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 it's all cool, and it's nice to be in blogs and stuff. But like that isn't where I see any new fans coming from. It's not where I see any opportunities coming from. It's just nice to be written about. Like I yeah. feel like we have tried to find ways to adapt to actually hit music lovers and hit people. And, and um, we've done a lot of collaborations for instance. And and I feel like doing a collaboration with, with an artist that we love and admire and that hopefully their fan base would like us too. is kind of like better than paying for a radio plugger. Or, or, you know, a press officer. Mm. 
Uh, even if we don't have to pay for it, like we didn't have to pay for it. We're so lucky that we've made friends with the people that we collaborated with. So we didn't have to pay for that. But, yeah. you know, I feel like there's there's better things you can do these time, uh, at this time. There's other ways to go about it because yeah. like, I told you this is a can of worms and feel free to tell me <laughs> shut up. But there's only limited. It's okay. No, it's interesting stuff, mate. I love it. Yeah. There's like limited spaces in all these like you say you're putting out your press release out there. There's limited spaces in blogs and magazines and TV shows and radio shows. Mm. Right. And everybody's fighting for them. So like for me, I'm just like, we're not cool anyway. I don't want the enemy to say that I'm cool. It doesn't bother me. Like if Jack Saunders doesn't want to play us on radio one, then he is, that's his fault. Like whatever. <laughs> I just do fit with, we just do things our own way. And then whatever, you know, see what see what happens, and I'd rather do yeah. things my way and fail than do it someone else's way and fail. But it was well, the, the lottery winners. Uh, I first caught you live supporting Miles on and Erica on the tour mm. at Manchester Academy a few years ago. Mm. Um, what kind of influence has Miles Hudden had on, particularly the early days of the of the lottery winners? How, how has he supported you? It's been a massive one, like. After that, we went on to support the Wonder Stuff, and he just took us under his wing. And he like, we'd never done a proper tour. We'd never felt like the actual going through the process of being a band, doing days and days and days, no break, hotels. Mm. We'd never had that like lift into that kind of proper band life, had we? And that was such a massive learning curve for us. Miles like proper taught you like you were like his apprentice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I am his Miles' apprentice, and even today, if I've if I've got a concern um, or a question, I'll, I'll text Miles and he's always so, it's probably why I'm so cynical these days because he's rubbing off on me because <laughs> he's quite grumpy, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm getting some grumpiness. Yeah. Old Uncle Milo. But um, yeah, no, he's, he's such a, an amazing, beautiful, intelligent man and uh, I really appreciate all his advice. And uh, yeah, I love him. I love him. Well, that, as a massive... As a massive Wonder Stuff fan myself, I've like all like I I bought Eight Leg Groove Machine when I was at school and just supported them all the way through my life. And the, the main thing about Miles Hunt is that he's an amazing storyteller, and and you guys are storytellers as well. So did did, did he rub off you in that way at all? And did, did he give you tips on writing and that kind of stuff? Not I so much. Feel, I, I feel I feel the influence, but I'm not sure why. Miles. Um... Loved what we were. Miles saw us at this tiny festival in Darwin. That was the first time that Miles saw us, and they were headlining, and we were on quite early. But I think they must have just arrived at the time we were playing. And um, he watched us, and then approached us, and was just like, "I really love what you're doing, and and I'd love it if we could, you know, tour together and stuff." And we were like, "Oh, wicked!" Um, so Miles was really like. His whole like ethos was stick to what you do and don't let other people rub off on you. Cause at the time we were in a, we're just signed to Warner brothers and we're in a, like a major label situation where there was a lot of A&R people trying to change what we were doing and who we are uh, and, and, th and the songs and everything about us. So miles was really on, on the side of don't let that happen. So, um, which was lucky cause you could have gone down that road a bit. Yeah, yeah, we had, we had like a, a choice to make, really. It's hard when you're a little band from Lee yeah. with nobody really likes standing up to yeah. someone who from New York who, who yeah. works for Warner Brothers and saying, actually, mate, I think you're wrong. I don't want to yeah. sound like Fallout Boy. I'm going to I'm gonna carry on doing the songs that that we like. Um, yeah. That was that was hard and, uh, you know, got dropped. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of things were uh, were mentioned to you? What kind of things did they suggest to change? Uh, it was a lot of, for some reason. I mean, I shouldn't be slagging off Warner Brothers. I'm not going to slag off Warner Brothers. I'm going to slag off <laughs> one individual there who's a really nice guy. We'll give him a fake name. We'll call him Eric. That's his real name, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, he was. He's a, are all he, the names. <laughs> all the names. No, let's not do Eric because that's his actual name. Let's, oh, I've said it now. 
He's not going to watch it. He's a really lovely guy. He's really great. I loved hanging out with him. It was dead cool that this guy from New York came to our sessions and stuff, and he was a beautiful, lovely person. But he really wanted us to be Fallout Boy. And I'm like, no, I don't want to be Fallout Boy. Like, he kept sending Fallout Boy tunes, and he was, like, trying to hook us up with Fallout Boy's producer. I'm just like, mate, yeah. I want to be Fallout Boy. Trying to get you to wear a leather jacket. It's <laughs> Fall out boys to men. <laughs> is that is that where the lyrics come from in one of your songs about you know not like liking bands in leather jackets? Um, that's uh, kinda, but I think around that time I was going to a hell of a lot of gigs because I thought you know I've got to yeah. sniff out the competition here, see what's going on. If anyone's doing anything good, got to have that. <laughs> Gonna take that. Yeah. Um, and I just saw this. It was just like it felt like I was watching the same band every night. And it, they were just, they just sound, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm sounding really cynical here. I'm a really nice person. I'm, just I'm a really nice person, but whatever it was, I saw like a run of bands and all the songs sounded the same and they all had leather jackets. Yeah. And I just thought, oh, I'm yeah. just sick of bands in leather jackets. I you just jackets. watching Ramones tribute bands for a week. <laughs> I just went to a <laughs> I think it's because I can't, I can't look good in a leather jacket. Yeah. No round man looks good in a leather jacket, so I think I'm just jealous. Yeah. <laughs> I can appreciate that. I've, I've tried to wear one before. I look like one of them old footballs you get my dad when I wear a leather jacket. <laughs> Casey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, the, the last time I caught you live was Kendall calling. Which in, year? In the woods, in that beautiful setting. Which yeah, year was and that? It, it was just uh, the last one that we're on. All right, 2000. Last year, year before. That was good. That apart yeah, from I left my wallet on stage with 500 quid in it. After I, I don't know why I have 500 quid. I'm not a baller. It was a rare occasion for me to have 500 quid on me, but I left it on stage yeah. and, and then it had gone. I lost 500 oh. quid at that gig. When thingy on after you get membranes? Or have, I, or have I got it wrong? I think it was. Uh, I have to ask John Rob about that. I can't, I can't remember who was on, but uh, I don't think it was them. I think we'd like, done it no, before, okay. and it was the gig fee, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was our show. From... Oh right, okay, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. So yeah, the, the progression of yeah, I've seen you in the academy to seeing you work that crowd at Kendall Calling. Um, when you, it, 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 you, you're a storyteller. I mentioned it earlier, uh, and there's and you're always telling stories when you're playing live. Are any of those um, planned, or is it all just natural? All the stuff that comes out of everybody's out of your mind. To be honest, I don't. I don't plan things. I'm going to say no. Um, sometimes I wish you would. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that were coming. Yeah, like it surprises me sometimes. Yeah. The, the, the shit I come out with. To be honest, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's hard work being. Because, like, to be honest, mate, it's not even me that goes on stage. I don't even know who he yeah. is. Like, I have no idea who that super confident person is who stands in my skin. But it ain't me. And he, he just, like, comes out every time that there's a stage and an audience. And, and I'm, I really envy and admire him. But, like, it's like I don't, I can't, I barely have any recollection of any gig we ever do. It's just like it's not me. And then the whole thing goes by really fast. And then I just have this like really horrible adrenaline dump come come down uh, at the end of gigs, and that so it's pretty it's pretty crap for me being in the band. That other version of me is having a well good time. I just have to deal with being in the van and coming down. Off it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you can remember. But I did. I sent you some questions over through Joe Lowe's a, a while ago, uh, and I asked you the question: What's the worst experience you've had on stage? Can you remember your answer? Did my willy fall out? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was my worst experience, but for a lot of people, probably their best ever gig experience. The best. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what's he like? What's it? What Katie? What's he like when he's not Tom on stage? What's he like in the recording sessions and? Um, Do you want the honest answer? <laughs> on, on, as honest as possible. Yeah. Um, it's it's horrible. No, uh, it's it's just yeah. You you are the same as stage, but do you reckon? You just it's just Mr. Motivator just yeah. doing lots of <laughs> no. It's just the the best work effort. Like 
through lockdown and stuff, we wouldn't have done anything if Tom wouldn't be like, come on, it's good. Yeah. She's not about that. He, he, we, we create stuff all the time. We, ne- we never stop. And it's because of Tom's drive. Yeah. It really is. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for well, I, I, stubborn. <laughs> I have never had anything close to a compliment of Katie Lloyd. <laughs> that is literally the first time <laughs> there we go. anything vaguely nice. That's about <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you worked you worked on on the video you made uh, with the collaboration with Frank Turner. I could, mm-hmm. I, I, you you put a few behind the scenes uh, pictures of it. You're just in your garage putting foil everywhere. Yeah, and, but it turned out amazing. So yeah, it's nice. Isn't it? <laughs> any funny stories from that experience? Well, I I love making videos. Me, I get right into it. And then just anything, actually. I love making songs and making videos and making artwork. I just yeah. love making stuff. It just really makes me... I can go to bed at night that night thinking, I made something, like, happened today. <laughs> so, like, yeah. I don't know. We, we're always having a laugh. Everything's a funny story. Like, we, we honestly... I, this ain't a job. Although, you know, we're at a studio yeah. now because it is our job. Yeah. But um, it doesn't feel like a job to me it just we're just having a laugh constantly and yes like you talk about our work ethic and how we have worked hard through the pandemic mm-hmm. um yeah and and t- at times it has been tiring but still it's just i wouldn't trade it for anything else would yeah. you like you can't, no. so doing that video yeah it was just a laugh from start to finish but they always are anyway every <laughs> single one we've ever done <laughs> yeah i often don't know what to expect no so the collaborations and that What's that? Yeah. Well, the, collabor- the collaborations have coming through thick and thin this year. Uh, you, you touched on it earlier. So the first one I saw was a Nickelback one. <clears throat> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> that just started on TikTok, didn't it? Yeah, bizarrely. The like, are a bit random, aren't they? Yeah, I, don't, I still, I'm still confused about that whole situation. But um, <laughs> yeah, basically, we were just like, oh, we, better, we probably should get on TikTok. Like that's what our kids are doing, isn't it? Like. We should probably well, we are gem just having a play on it, yeah. Yeah, so we we downloaded TikTok and I was just like, oh, dancing. Yes, yeah, sea shanties okay. is a thing at the moment for some yeah. reason. So I was just like, I rang up Rob and I was like, mate, just make a sea shanty, and he's like, of what? And I was like, I don't know. And I was ironing at the time, and I had a bangers yeah. playlist on on Spotify, and I just like looked at my laptop, and the first thing I saw was Nickelback Rockstar. And I was like, I don't know, do Nickelback Rockstar. And um, and I was thinking, I thought, actually, that, that would kind of work because there's a lot of words in it. And then Rob sent me 50 or 60 terrible versions of it before I told him exactly how I wanted it. So it was all my genius. It's all Tom's credit, none of us, obviously. <laughs> and then, yeah, we posted that. And then I got in touch kind of immediately and we're just like, hey, guys. So we- how did that happen? Just a phone was it just a phone call from him? We got a, t- a DM on Twitter, and then straight after that, we yeah. did uh, a Zoom with them all, <laughs> which was really weird. But it, was, it all happened immediately, like straight away. They got in touch, yeah. and they were like, "Right, let's do it again. Let's do it together. So let's do the TikTok again, but together and longer." Yeah. And we're like, "Okay." And and bear in mind, there's an eight-hour time difference between Canada and uh, wherever we're from, Mars. Yeah. And um, so, like, that night, we went and did our parts. Like, we just thought, we'll get straight on this, recorded it all, and the next morning, they put theirs on, and then that TikTok went up, and it did it did really well. It got, like, a million views or something immediately. And then Chad Kroger was like, let's do the full tune. And it was like, right, okay. So then we went and did the full song, arranged it all. Someone arranged it all. Some genius. Obviously. Some absolute stunning, sexy frontman genius put it all together and arranged it. And um, they loved it. They put their parts on. And then now it's on Spotify, yeah. <laughs> which is weird. And I've got a writing and a production credit on Nickelback, which I just think yeah. is really weird. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so again, and then you've got a new one with Louise Wiener. Yeah. Um, absolute you know, uh, icon from my days of growing up. Um, how, how has that been with your new single, Bad Things? Yeah, it's been really nice. That's one of the most, that's one of my favourite songs that we've put out lately. Um, it was kind of written, str- as, 
as soon as like March happened last year and it was kind of looking like, oh, this is going to be like what life's going to be like for a while. I got mm. really headstrong into writing songs and been quite prolific, to be honest, um, and written a lot. And that was one of the first that I did. And and I remember I sent it to you and you were like, this sounds like this feels like a real song. <laughs> I was like, oh, it was gonna be thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah and then louise yeah. got her vocals on it and she just sounds so cool yeah so it was never it, i was how, how did yeah. you how did how did the hookup sound how, how, how did, did the it, link happen between you both we supported um sleeper on tour in 2018 right. okay. for their comeback tour mm-hmm. and got along really really well with them and louise in particular and then when um we did like a, an internet TV show called LWTV, which was just on Sundays on our Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Uh, Louise Wenner came on as a guest on that. And that's when I asked her after that. Oh, and yeah. oh, but that's also how the Frank Turner thing happened. And we had, um, sure. well, we, did, we did a lot. We had like Rick Astley came on the show for a chat. Andy Burnham. Miles, wow. Miles Hunt. Yeah. Um, Rowetta from the Happy Mondays. I'm going to be forgetting people. James yeah. from Star yeah. Sailor. Yeah. Damon from Paul Weller's band, Clint Boone. Clint Boone. Like we had some crazy guests, much better than your guests who are us. Yeah. Like maybe I should be booking guests for you. <laughs> <laughs> you can do, mate. Please, <laughs> can you just get me half of what you, the people you just listed? <laughs> so, um, so what? So you, you're in a recording studio now, then. So just what can you say about what you're doing at the minute? We are recording the next album which we started to do over the summer. When when uh, the restrictions eased, they kind of eased a little bit in summer, didn't they? Mm-hmm. And um, studios were, and, and are allowed to be open now, I should add. Mm-hmm. But um, when they first became to be allowed open in the summer, we went away and, um, sorry, Tristan's ringing me. We went away and, um, recorded like 22 no more we recorded something crazy like 30 tunes which a lot a lot of the the ep that we just put out the collaborations was a part of that and then um we're finishing off the rest for the next album which will be hopefully september excellent so to link in with the tour so big tour coming up in september it's got to happen now on it surely i think so i think so i actually do think so this time I i think we're going to be all right I think we're going to be all right. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for joining me today for the RGM podcast. I really appreciate your time. I've loved watching your journey as a band and I'm going to really enjoy watching it flourish um, as you as you bring out this new album and just continue doing great content. Really appreciate your time, guys. And Thanks. Thanks for having thanks us, dude. Thank You're you welcome, so much. Mate. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Come on, thanks, guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs>